Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by JJ Zacharyson of FanDuel to help us learn who to buy and who to sell. What's going on, JJ? Uh, not too much. I'm just uh, trying to sort of weed through all these quarterback injuries and figure out what the heck is going on with the NFL right now. I also have to give it up to you, man, for the brand. Like, there is so much FanDuel stuff behind you. It is incredibly impressive. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You got it, man. All right, let's start with who you're buying. We'll begin... Well, pretty much where we began last week, and that was with Mike Evans. Jameis Winston, game manager, is who we saw last Thursday night, and it was Chris Godwin as the wide receiver one, not so much Mike Evans, and yet you're still buying Evans. How come? Yeah, so his peripherals still look fine, Mike Evans do. He did have four catches for 61 yards, nothing special on Thursday night, but so far he has 55 more air yards than anyone else on that Buccaneers team. That includes Chris Godwin. Uh, he's just really in, in a decent spot. We know that he was uh, sick in week one, physically ill in week one, uh, and he only has two fewer targets than Chris Godwin to start the season. So things are still pointing up for Mike Evans. I know that the production hasn't been there on the field, but there are at least some reasons for it, um, and he does have those peripherals. So I think that he should bounce back. Would you trade Mike Evans for Chris Godwin right now? That's a great question. Uh, I think that Godwin still probably has just the better inherent floor, just given the role that he plays and him being the slot guy in that offense. But I do still think that if you're reaching for ceiling and if you want that ceiling, that Mike Evans would be your guy. Mike Evans still reliable, according to JJ. Peripherals look good, which means there's a good chance to buy him low. So get on it right now. Another guy that J.J. is buying here is Arizona's Christian Kirk. And if you want to look at peripherals, it's all been Larry Fitzgerald and Christian Kirk. There's just two guys in this offense where Kyler Murray is looking, and that's exactly what we're looking for when it comes to fantasy football. Yeah, so I kind of wish that Christian Kirk didn't have the, the game that he had against Baltimore last week because then, then you could easily buy him low, but he did come through with a pretty strong performance. Even still, he's top 30 in the league right now in target share. That's a great number, especially in an offense that's running at the fastest pace in the league. They have more pass attempts than any other team in football. And even if you remove that overtime against Detroit, they still rank seventh in pass attempts. So that large target share in an offense that sees a lot of pass attempts, that means lots and lots of volume for Christian Kirk. I love him. I, I would even buy at Larry Fitzgerald if I could uh, because Baltimore is no longer on the schedule for them and things should open up a little bit. Things are a whole lot better for Arizona and they've been in these games here uh, in their first two weeks. We think Arizona certainly a team to watch going forward. Christian Kirk, one of those main reasons why Arizona looking a lot more fun than they did a year ago. Continuing on, looking at players that JJ is buying, we get to Leonard Fournette. During the offseason, fantasy experts completely split whether they wanted a piece of Fournette or not. And, well, since Gardner Minshew has taken over, it's been the Fournette show. Well, he didn't really need to take over for that to happen. It's always been the Fournette show since he was drafted by the Jags. How come you're continuing to buy on Leonard Fournette? Yeah, so right now he hasn't found the end zone, so this is sort of a buy low moment. Um, I generally don't like targeting running backs in bad offenses, and that's generally what you're seeing with Jacksonville, given the fact that they, they have a backup quarterback under center who looks decent, to be fair. Um, but right now, Leonard Fournette is second in the league in percentage of running back rushes. Only Christian McCaffrey has seen more of his team's running back rushes to start the season, and he's top five in target share, or only five running backs have a higher target share than Leonard Fournette to start the year. So I, I love the situation from, from a volume perspective, and there really aren't many bell cows left in the league at running back. So uh, that's really why you're buying Leonard Fournette right now. Yeah, if you can find that bell cow, you're in a great, great spot. Leonard Fournette, he qualifies. Grab him before it's too late. All right, let's talk about who we are selling through the first two weeks of the season. And that brings us to Oakland. Josh Jacobs, someone everybody was buying a piece of after week one. And now after week two, you're going the other way. I know he's battling a little bit of an injury here. What's going on with Josh Jacobs? Yeah, so my deal with Jacobs is the fact that, you know, after week one, everyone thought that he could be a bell cow, and then you go into week two, um, and, and we see them in a negative game script, which will probably be often this year, given Oakland's roster, but we see them in a negative game script, and in that situation, you see a lot of Jalen Richard, you see a lot of DeAndre Washington, uh, so Josh Jacobs, as a result, didn't see a single target it's kind of surprising because Jacobs coming out, if there was anything that, that looked really, really good with his college pro, pro production profile, uh, was the fact that he was a good receiver. Um, but he wasn't on the field in those negative game scripts. And I'm worried moving forward that his snap share is going to decrease because of the fact that Oakland's likely not going to be leading in a lot of games. Given the injury and given what Oakland's stature is in the league, not very good. Josh Jacobs' role may not be limited, but it may, the ceiling may not be as high as we want it to be. This is a perfect time to sell Josh Jacobs. You could still get a ton for him. So certainly consider at least seeking other offers. Looking around the league, another player that you want to sell 
is Peyton Barber. This is an obvious one. He had a great game last Thursday night. Ronald Jones is still around. Daria Gumawale is as well. Peyton Barber's a plotter, but looked pretty good last week. Yeah, he did. I mean, he was still a little bit inefficient per touch. Um, but look, it was a Thursday night game. It was a shortened week. So it makes sense that they would want to feed sort of the veteran guy in that backfield or the most reliable guy in that backfield. Um, but as you noted, you still have Ronald Jones there. You still have Dare Agumbawale, who's playing that third down role. So Peyton Barber, as you noted, a pretty easy sell this week. Yeah, I, I actually dropped them before the season started. So I already sold on Peyton Barber. Uh, and if you have him, now's the time you maybe get some get something more for him than I did, which was, uh, I, I believe, nothing. So, good for you. Bad for me. One last play you're selling, and this one hurts a lot, because one of my guys coming into the season was Sony Michelle. Through two games, Sony Michelle has, well, not been much better than Peyton Barber. Through the first week, nothing. Last week, at least he had a touchdown, had a ton of carries, but the yards weren't as plentiful as we hoped they would be. He also fumbled, which is scary going into week three. How come you're selling Sony Michelle? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, you might recall entering the season, a lot of people were hyping Sony Michelle up as being a potential receiver or, or getting more receiving work out of that backfield. So far through two games, Sony Michelle has zero targets. And now some people might be saying it's because they haven't faced a negative game script, but even still, New England has targeted their running backs at, at the highest rate in the entire league through two weeks of the season. And Sony Michelle still doesn't see, ha, still doesn't have a single target. Uh, so I think that he's an easy sell, despite the fact that he has just as much touchdown upside as anyone else in the league. I just think that his week-to-week -week production is going to be pretty volatile. At least the Patriots' schedule is good, allowing Sonny Michel hopefully to get a lot of playing time, but it's really just touchdown dependent when it comes to Sonny Michel. He has zero role in the passing game. There's at least two running backs ahead of him there. Sonny Michel is what he is. In a good matchup, he could be great. In a not-so-good matchup, he may give you nothing. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. JJ, good luck on the waiver wire this weekend. We're all looking for a quarterback, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, man. Good luck to you as well. Tomorrow, Jim Sanos will join me as we look toward week three in DFS. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.